Hey, what's going on? My name is Alex with DJ Cut Entertainment. And if you're getting ready to hire a wedding DJ, here are some common questions that the DJ might ask you. Hey, what's going on? My name is Alex Ramey. I'm a DJ in the Portland, Oregon area. And today I want to cover the most common questions that a DJ might ask you before booking. So if you're heading into a video chat or a consultation meeting, you might want to do some research and be prepared to answer these questions. Uh, these are the common questions that I will ask my client if they don't ask me. What does it take to book you for my day? And you want to find out if you're booking the company or if you're booking the individual DJ that you're talking to. Sometimes you're actually hiring the company, not the person that you're talking to. So you want to find out how much is the retainer or the deposit? Um, is there a contract that's going to be sent to us? Is it all online? So you want to find out what it takes to reserve your DJ for that particular day and then also find out if you're reserving the DJ or if you're reserving the company. And that's one thing that you want to read over in the contract. So one of the biggest factors when it comes to pricing and package, especially with my company is you need to know how many hours you're going to need the DJ for. That's going to really depend on the price of the DJ. So the DJ is going to want to go over the timeline. And so you're going to need to know how many hours you're going to need the DJ for. And usually DJs start 30 minutes before the ceremony and then all the way up to the end. So it's a good idea to have a rough timeline before you jump on a phone call. This will dramatically affect the cost of the DJ. Uh, with our company, we start at a five hour package and then we have uh, overtime and it's done by hour. Now the DJ is gonna wanna go over the ceremony and the biggest thing for the ceremony is how far away is it from the reception? Uh, our company, this doesn't really matter because we use two different setups, but some DJs might only use one setup or have to carry the setup uh, between locations. Probably want to know how many people are going to be at the ceremony and picking out music, uh, find out how they select music, whether it's an online form, um, whether you just need to email them. So you're going to want to cover that. Then they're also going to ask you who's all speaking, who needs to be mic'd up. Uh, some DJs have wireless mics. Some people have lapel mics. Uh, we have both. Uh, we can mic up to six different people for the ceremony. So that's one thing that they're, they're going to want to ask, who is being mic'd up? And then sometimes ceremonies have people doing live music, uh, whether that's somebody playing a violin, a piano. So that's one thing that they're going to ask you about the ceremony. We're also going to ask if there's uh, sand pouring, uh, knot tying, all the little different sub ceremonies that are going to be included in your ceremony. That's, those are some questions that the DJ will ask you about the ceremony. They're also going to want to know what time to start background music and what time you guys are planning on walking. So when it comes to uh, cocktail hour, bridal introductions and dinner, this is really going to depend on your guys' timeline, but it's, the biggest factor is what time uh, dinner starts. Um, me personally, I like to know if the dinner is in a certain location separate from cocktail so we can have proper sound depending on the different locations. Uh, they're probably going to ask you where they're going to do the bridal introductions. Um, are we just introducing the bride or the whole wedding party? Then also on the back end, you're going to want to ask, how do I get the songs to you? Uh, where do we input them? Uh, with our company, we have an online form system, and that takes care of every single song throughout the day that we're going to need to know information for. Now, when it comes to dinner time, sometimes the planner dismisses tables. Uh, sometimes the DJ dismisses tables. So you want to check with them and make sure that this is something that they're comfortable doing. Uh, if they're a professional, they should be more than comfortable going around to dismiss tables. Uh, some might do it over the microphone, and some might walk around to individual tables to dismiss people for dinner. One of the big things that the DJ will want to know is venue requirements. Uh, certain venues have a sound ordinance of a dB level, so the DJ can't go over that dB level or the venue get really mad and kind of shut you down. Um, some venues that I work with here in Portland don't allow us to bring subs. Um, so it really just depends on the particular venue. Uh, we also have some venues that have like a really strict music time, like 
alcohol has to be cut off at 9.30. Uh, dancing has to be done at 10, and you have to be out by 11. Um, certain venues only give us a certain amount of time to set up in the morning. So the DJ is really going to ask, hey, what are your venue requirements? This is a backyard wedding. It's a little bit more relaxed. We don't have to worry about it. But there are some strict venues here. Um, some venues, they don't even let us walk in unless we show them our insurance. So this is probably a good question that your DJ is going to want to know because there's a lot of different variables when planning your event. The DJ is going to want to go over different areas and sound requirement for each area. What I mean by this is sometimes we do the reception in its own area. So we have our big dance floor set up and that's where our big package is. Then we have the ceremony that's in a different location. Uh, me personally, I always use a second setup for my ceremony because it's completely different equipment. Instead of having you know two, just two wireless, we have two lapel mics. It's a completely different setup because ceremonies nine times out of 10 are in a completely different location. Now, sometimes we'll have cocktail hour in its own location off to the side. And so sometimes we'll need to do a different setup for that. So depending on the weddings, I mean, I've done weddings before where I've had four different sound systems set up just because we were using different parts of the venue and we had to have proper sound in those locations. So it really just depends on the venue. Now I've done big hotels where we've had, you know, one or two setups, but we had to bring six, seven speaker setups because the amount of people that were there and where everything was located. So it's really just going to be dependent. So the DJ is probably going to ask you, hey, where's everything located and where do we need sound for each event? Now, one thing the DJ might ask you or you might ask them is how do you handle music? Uh, with my company personally, we have everything online. So we have a ceremony form, a reception form, and then also we have a music request for the dance party. And so you want to find out, one, if your DJ takes requests, how they handle requests. Um, can guests go up and make requests? Uh, what type of music do they like to play? Um, us personally, we'll play anything that is edited. We try to stick to high energy music and sing-alongs. If somebody comes up and wants a dance request that we feel is questionable, then we'll send that uh, guest over to the bride and groom and get their approval because sometimes they want a song that's not you know, necessarily deemed appropriate for a wedding. But if we get the okay and we have it on our computer, then we'll go ahead and play that song. And so that's how we handle dance requests. One of the things that you should ask or the DJ will ask you is what style of MC would you like to see at your event? Would you like somebody that's engaging and interacting, uh, gets people up laughing, or do you want somebody that's more uh, fly on the wall just to announce things uh, when events are about to happen and keep the ball rolling? So you'll either want to ask or have the DJ ask what style of MC. Usually when I get done with my consultations and if this question has not been brought up, and that's one thing that I like to go over because I feel that the MC portion is a lot more important than the music. If I keep the events moving and everything flowing smoothly, it's going to be a lot more noticeable than if I play an okay song versus a really good song. Hey, thank you guys for watching. My name is Alex with DJ Cut Entertainment. And these are the top questions that I ask my clients in all my clients' meetings. Thank you guys very much. Have a good day.